what a shit show what a shit show anyway talking about shit shows let's move on to Tory Lanez's new album Daystar has just released right um and it's caused a bit of controversy a little bit of um, controversy on the social media space um obviously because of what's uh led up to it you know the alleged shooting between Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion we haven't really got much details as to what's happened so far <clears throat> but it's been alleged or you know she directly said on her Instagram live Megan Thee Stallion that Tory Lanez shot her um you know during a dispute in a car about something and now we're in a position where people are essentially trying to cancel Tory Lanez for what he done because they're alleged you know obviously think that he was responsible for shooting a female which is you know is completely out of bounds shooting anybody um especially during an argument <clears throat> let alone a woman <clears throat> let alone somebody you're romantically involved in so it's all a bit of a shit show in that respect but from the onset it always seemed a bit fishy to me right the story i never really bought it um i guess because i've been following people like you know mob radio milagro graham so big up at her she's been reporting this in a very in in a very um journalistic way right she was really doing some investigative journalism taking in different sort of references and sources really reading people's words um you know um pulling resources from her local from her community who are awesome they're always on the right pages at the right time to screenshot the right things and send them through loads of receipts everywhere and generally just been asking a lot of questions as to megan's sort of like standing in this case and how this is sort of you know erupted and i guess my initial response to this was to not to believe it just because from the fact of megan's character don't know the woman at all but just based on what i saw online and the debacle around her original record label deal and how she sort of spun it to make it seem like she was coerced into signing a bad deal when the details of the deal did get leaked we found that it was a pretty standard record deal don't get me wrong very sh very one-sided deal that probably favors the label or favors the people that put the money in but it was un it wasn't anything uncommon in that deal that you wouldn't find in anybody else's deal that signed recently especially people that signed that atlantic and stuff like 360 deals exist they're part of the fabric of the music industry they're really bad you know record labels being able to take a, a part of your money from every avenue that you're involved in hence the term 360 from your touring to your merch to deals that you do outside of music they can obviously take a cut of it and that's obviously um very much not, it's probably not the best or fairest way to go about things but you know it is what it is so for megan and her team to purposely contort that story to make it seem like she was bullied or the patriarchy took control of her contract she wasn't given um agency and all this sort of stuff and then the flirting and then the initial signing with rock nation to sort of strong arm and pressure her original record label owners to forego the rights to her album or forego the rights to her as an artist and to sign her up were just all questionable things that i never really agreed with and i guess from that onwards i thought you know what if somebody's willing to do that in order to kind of get out of a deal to lie on purpose to use the media use her fans to kind of um bully um, them out into giving her you know into giving her up her kind of contract and give it to rock nation somebody else of course is likely to do something like this now again the issue i think especially if you listen to the album um that tori has because i think he alleges that they were actually in a relationship of some sort they had a lot of feelings for each other he's obviously completely hurt because he feels like you know somebody that he was obviously had a relationship with shouldn't ha shouldn't have basically stabbed him in the back in this way i don't really see in that way i think i think sometimes especially if having read stories regarding people in la i just think the energy over there in hollywood the fact that your life can suddenly turn for the better um after a couple of appearances and people so you know you could literally appear in someone's instagram story and your whole entire career could change for the better in an instant so i think in that scenario or in that sort of environment sometimes logic reason and just you know grown-up behavior goes out the window because you're just so you're so kind of grateful and and aware that your career could disappear in an instant as well if you make the wrong move so sometimes when people do some really shady things right in terms of you know throwing their friends under the bus lying about something um contorting the truth making up stories um stealing money whatever i have a little bit of forgiveness and understanding especially if it's happening in la because i just know how cutthroat it is um and people are just doing what they have to do to survive now would i want to purposely put myself in that position no would i ever do that to somebody of course not but i understand how that could happen from the outside looking in so for tory to sit there and be shocked and surprised that somebody like a megan stallion who has everything to lose if this story what he's saying is correct 
right? If what he said happened the way it happened and he didn't shoot her and it was actually the fact that Megan was so blackout drunk, she has no idea what happened that she actually might have ended up shooting herself or something along those lines allegedly, it's obviously going to hamper her career. It's obviously going to affect a lot of deals that she has in the pipeline. Um, and it's actually no coincidence really if you think about it that, you know, subsequent to shooting a lot of her promo um, was really rushed, right? In terms of WAP, in terms of her performance with Twitch or whatever, was it Tidal? Actually, did. a lot of stuff came um, on the back end of that shooting that kind of on the other side of the shooting that makes you think, you know what? There obviously was an understanding that if this goes left, you need to get all these deals out of the way. The, she's got like a makeup thing with Revlon, I think, happening, I saw. So that was always a bit fishy for me. But again, um, talking about the album itself, the album is really good, right? Tory Lane's um, album. I'd say easily it might be up there with one of his better projects, I think, of recent, um, especially when you think of him post uh, getting out of the record label deal, right? I think Chick's Tape was maybe the first was it the first one? No, that that was the last me. Oh, Chick Tape was the last album on his record deal, right? It says here, um, Interscope and Mad Love, and then I guess Day Stars on One Umbrella, his own um imprint. So, this is definitely what this is definitely why most artists like getting out record deals, especially an artist of his caliber. You're able to actually do your own thing, you know, um, move to the beat of your own drum, getting your own producers, um, work with people that you actually want to work with and not get put with people because of political connections and favors, all this sort of nonsense happens at record label. And then of course, the other added side of it is that his back is against the wall, right? He's essentially in a you know um, life or death situation he mentions in the album he's facing up to eight years or something along those kind of lines he has the entire industry against him because essentially he, you know he he may be allegedly her woman and um it just looks like a bad situation we're all in so and no surprise that when you're back against the wall you're definitely going to deliver on your better projects that meme that goes around about your future whenever he breaks up with somebody he puts out his best work isn't unfounded definitely when these kind of artists are put in a position where they're in heartbreak or in sort of distress they are able to somehow channel that into uh, an amazing music because there's part of me that thinks he wouldn't have able to, i don't think he would have been able to articulate himself this as this strongly this clearly just doing an instagram live i think his artistry and his talent allows him to make songs and make them so thematic and illustrative and just and just really really kind of resonate with the audience more so for his music than with instagram live and that's where kind of being able to do your own thing sort of helps and again look at the timing he might have lost his quarantine radio deal and some other deals off the back end but off the back of the sh alleged shooting but the fact that he was able to come off of his you know essentially buy his way out of his masters or, or, or i don't know how it happened actually i don't know if he did do that but however however he finished his, his deal with interscope it happened and then he's in a position now, of course, which is not the best, you know, having this alleged of your head isn't the best thing, but he's also in a position where he can sort of like put out music when he wants, even if he does get cancelled, right? He's not in a position where like he can suddenly get stopped from putting music or putting a back burner. But now it's going to hurt him in terms of press. There's been certain outlets have come out and said, oh, we're not going to cover him. And certain people, I'm sure, radio stations are going to, you know, use their influence to not put him on rotation. And there's going to be a lot of gatekeepers, you know, sticking their nose in. Um, and a lot of it, I think, has to do with I've been thinking about this a lot. I think it might have to do with the fact that a lot of these same people were the same people that might have turned a blind eye to the whole Rihanna and Chris, uh, Rihanna and Chris Brown situation that happened, you know, a few years back. I think a lot of people, again, that was maybe the first sort of like big, you know, moral decision making thing that people have had to face in that industry in music or intent entertainment especially at that time chris brown and rihanna were both um as equally as loved maybe rihanna more so but it wasn't as if like chris brown was such a social pride that he is now that was chris brown prior to all the madness you know and the controversies and the things he's gone through which is obviously come out of them the better side but i think a lot of those people who felt like they fell on the wrong side of history are now trying to rewrite their wrongs with this tory lanes issue because on paper to me it doesn't make any sense one person alleges one thing happened, your person alleges another thing happened. Why is it that one person believed more than the other? Especially when there's so far the evidence points to the fact that more of more likely than not, whatever events of the story that Megan's put out there, it doesn't necessarily corroborate with the evidence. Right? So far, Tori hasn't been charged with shooting her. So far, we've had no evidence that she even got shot with a bullet directly into her foot. As she mentioned, she got shot in both feet. We had not seen any evidence of it. It suggested she maybe got hurt in one and some shrapnel in the other foot. None of her friends have come out and backed, or none of her friends that were actually there have backed up the story. Um, and it just entirely seems completely fishy. So to suddenly go into a place where, you know, Tory Lanez hasn't spoken once in public since this has happened, right? He says something on the mixtape on the album, sorry. Maybe the album is a bit, you know forceful and a little bit too 
you know, direct in some of its nature, but I think it needed to be said, um, you know, and it is what it is. And now he's being, you know, essentially torn down for saying so, or even releasing the music. I think some people out there are alleging that he took away from the tension from the Breonna Taylor case. And, you know, it's just an unfortunate consequence that when he put out the album, that, you know, the verdict for the Breonna Taylor case was put forth. And, you know, again, no one agrees with that verdict. No one thinks a young lady minding her own business in her own home and suddenly getting blasted, you know, by police officers looking for a suspect who they haven't identified visually is any kind of way to deal with anything, especially when you consider the charges levied against the officers, right? one officer got charged one ton was it one ton derangement or whatever some something stupid case right no no murder no manslaughter so for him to suddenly now be placed under that same sort of company is really 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 disingenuous and really kind of disrespectful to brian teller's legacy right do you know what I mean? like he clearly thinks he didn't do nothing wrong he's trying to defend himself because his career is on the line his life is on the line the the future of his family is on the line it's completely understandable why he do that and it's also completely understandable why megan will also want to come out and put her narrative forward too i can I understand it both of them in the industry they have to sort of protect their own uh businesses and again you have to always look at these things especially when you look at a Tory lane especially when you look at how he's evolved over quarantine the quarantine radio and just generally his popularity and megan too these people are not only just artists that you listen to that you like when you add on your playlist they're also entities and brands and corporations in their own right they have a lot of money tied up next to them or associated with them right so the pressure that they have in terms of making sure that they put out their narrative or they spin stuff in a certain way is really really high they have to always do it because there's so literally you know imagine if i think i've said this before like imagine if your agent just bought a bloody new condo right and you moved into it with his new fiance and then suddenly you're getting wrapped up into a shooting incident of course it's going to play into your mind as to how you speak about it in public because you don't want your agents to suffer through your recklessness do you know what i mean so there's loads of issues going in there but i think one of the better um and of course you know outlets have kind of been out there besmirching his name i think the first one to kind of mention is this ridiculous comment on ig by high snobiety um i don't know why they think they're the authority or they're the place to have any kind of um say so in hip-hop culture to have any sort of say so into who gets to speak and who doesn't who gets covered who doesn't they're essentially a bl a hype blog um you know what a hype blog compilation site they're not even a publication in that respect right they've sort of always been in the shadow of a hype beast um you know i've met a couple of people that work behind the scenes there they're as far associated with hip-hop as as i am associated with martial arts it makes no complete sense but again this is just the the weird sort of like um public jockeying and performance activism people do online just to so that they can protect themselves and make sure that they're on the right side of history in case it goes the way that they want but let's imagine for a, a, a second this court this case goes to court and it's found out on the ledge that megan lied what happens then all of this nonsense all this posturing online makes you look stupid right it's no one's business in the first place now that it's been made public of course f lend your opinion on the matter but to make a judgment to make a, a a a verdict on the issue is nonsensical especially when you're in a publication that's high society where you 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 are only you're only as strong as the talent that's around on the that's the, the talent in the industry you're only as strong as whatever you know what i mean you, you're just a, you're just a news aggregator you don't play any part in moving culture for you just report on the news if you're then going out and you know blackballing a Tory lanes what does that look like to the other artists who else wants to support it again if other artists decide to blackball you you're dead in an instant he isn't because he's got his fan base your fan base is only there because you cover certain things you cover certain brands so it's a really nonsensical way to go about things but this is a statement i said said the last time that we will cover toy lane it says the rapper just added to his list of disgraceful behavior by dropping the most toxic album of the year he recently became a music industry pariah after megan stallion revealed that he shot her during an incident that led to arrest in july 12th however rather than publicly apologizing to megan or addressing the issue he released an album instead using the media's attention for a shooting to promote his work now obviously that sentence makes no sense right he did publicly address it on the album he didn't do it on instagram live and incriminate himself like some other dancers this is the thing i don't get so people get involved in really tetchy and very life-changing and very dangerous situations and they jump on instagram and the fans are quickly to go oh man why don't you just call the person why are you doing this for why are you doing that for somebody finally decides to use some comment use some rational thinking critical thinking take a deep breath step away from social media and address the allegations on music but right? music style as they might have said in joe button podcast and now that's a bad thing i don't see that's a bad thing at all 
if anything, right? Especially if you clearly think you did nothing wrong, what's the issue? There should be no real issue there. Like, if Megan decides to say something on the issue without, you know, um, and quite categorically come out and say he shot her, because she didn't even speak about it in like vague terms. She definitely said his name. Tori's the one that shot her. She alleged that was exactly what happened, how she remembered it. That's fair enough. I'm not here to say whether she's lying or not in that instance. I think, judging by the evidence it's available, that she probably is, but you're all in your right to say that. So is Tori to defend himself. It shouldn't be that much, shouldn't be that difficult to understand. It says Lane's moves are particularly sickening considering the proximity to his week's role, ruling of the murder of Brianna Taylor again, not his, not his fault in 1962, Malcolm X. Come on. These people are from Berlin, right? They're like, you know what I mean? Like, they're like, I don't understand why suddenly now they're ca- they're like, what? Capping for Megan and Stalin and invoking the spirit of Malcolm X. It's insane. Said that the most uh, disrespected person in America is a black woman. Taylor's memory has been used to sell magazine, get clicks, and win political favor. And yet the police officers responsible who are therefore not brought to justice. Again, posturing, you know, virtue signaling nonsense. Like, you want, you go to High Snob IE for news about Virgil Abloh's next flipping sneaker collaboration. You don't go for, to them to get a, a, a t- to get like an aggregator of what to do in, you know, social issues, like how to think about certain things. That's not what you go to them for. Um, Lanes has used the same logic to promote his album, exploiting the trauma enacted on black women for financial and critical cultural gains, sorry, while refusing to protect them or acknowledge their, cul- his, their culpability. Um, that's why you'll never see him on our website or social platforms again again bullshit who cares isn't it no one should care about how somebody covering music i didn't even know they cover music right the website fucking sucks everything the, those high snob shots as well are bloody terrible but again a weird thing to sort of posture on especially considering it's an open case we don't know the truth of the issue is even if he's guilty or not why not wait until the verdict has come out before making a decision it makes no sense and again they're shooting themselves in the foot in this case because they're only as strong as the talent they report on so if the talent decide to um turn around and say hey don't cover me you're done you're finished no one wants to listen to you anyway and then this article here from um variety is a really good one it touches really well fairly on both issues it's titled tory lanes denies megan sally an account of being shot in a highly defensive surprise album i really recommend you check it out um and yeah man i think review wise um i think the album again easily one of his better works i think in terms of the case it's very interesting because he does throw a lot of people under the bus one of the more interesting parts of it is the fact that he alleges that he thinks rock nation might be behind some of the public um what the smear campaign against him which is kind of interesting considering Jay-Z standing in the industry that he would be purposely trying to derail Tory Lanez's career in this way, of course, to support his own artist. Now we say Jay-Z because he's, you know, it's, that's his um, label, but obviously we know that there's a lot more people that work there, but you have the feeling when you're, when you're, you know, with Rock Nation that nothing goes, nothing gets done at Rock Nation without Jay-Z's no so or approval or somehow, right? They don't just go out and do things the way they want to be done. I'm sure he has a touch. He has a, a feeling on everything. I know people always allege that he's always on the internet with the burner account, watching and reading everything. He's, especially when he puts out, you know, records or he does um, features, he always seems to be very on point in knowing what the current lexicon is, what's happening out there. He's not, you know, um, detached from what's going on in the scene. So you could definitely see this happening so that's a very interesting part of it the other part of it is the fact that um he alleges that you know again this uh, this alleged issue that megan might have with alcohol where she does definitely does go a bit crazy and maybe goes a bit too over the top with it that might put in compromising positions could this be the issue that she was embarrassed that she got into that position and maybe the underlying part of it especially when you took when you see how um troy lane's referred to kylie looking like an angel like a baby in a manger a little bit cuties reference there but hey but that's interesting part of the story too right the fact that these two very powerful influential beautiful women in the industry f- both felt very uneasy with each other in the same scenario especially when you think about like the video that we first saw of kylie and megan in the pool behind you know and then tory lane's coming out behind them and then suddenly fast forward to the fact that you know tory is alleging that megan got annoyed or got pissed off that Tori was flirting with Kylie in the pool and stormed out and they didn't realize even at the time but you know that's what basically caused the whole altercation that led to the shooting allegedly that's another part of the interesting part of the story right that these these two people had a what a a pre-existing issue prior to them going over or was it more sort of a thing of like you know two hot girl energies can't be in the same place at the same time regardless that's another interesting part of the story 
And of course, him going after everybody that besmirched his name from J.R. Ryder to Marl on the Joe Budden podcast to Jojo to Kalani. Everyone got it in their head. And I really appreciate that. The fact that he went so dirty to name people because too often you get all the subliminals and the innuendos and sort of the beef in terms of hip hop. But to suddenly have someone that kind of is pulling people's cards and saying, hey, I heard what you said, you know, um, I'm here is amazing. And then seeing the backlash and seeing the kind of um, the 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 consequence of this like you know now he's suddenly got a beef an issue with Bumby um now he's got an issue now with Rick Ross has kind of come out and then another surprising villain or another opponent of Tory Lanez during his whole debacle is Halsey Halsey now comes out and, and slammed Tory Lanez and says here uh, Tory Lanez calls uproar across social media on Thursday night when he teased that he would be finally break his silence after Meng Salin um Instead of coming clean, he, which he did on the album, the rapper and singer whose real name is Daystar Peterson, and by the seven track album called Daystar with the lead track Money of a Fallouts featuring the line, got to see a couple of questions. Um, how the fuck you get shot in the foot but don't hit no burns and tendons? And again, that's a genuine question. That's an odd thing I hate about this whole case. You can't ask questions. I get the whole believe we women um idea i get the idea that hey you, we should kind of not be put you shouldn't be in a place where you're victim shaming straight off the bat but you can ask questions you're allowed to right you're allowed to ask a question as to why a person will put themselves in a dangerous position then if it transpires out of that questioning that they didn't put themselves in a position just an unlucky situation that led to them being negatively affected then cool all sympathy to that issue but you're allowed to ask questions as to why certain things happened the way that they did especially when you know you know the anatomy you know about how many bones are in the foot for somebody to get shot directly in both feet and not hit any bones and tenders makes no sense especially considering how she went about after right the fact that she was so defensive on instagram live whenever people questioned the fact that she's injured and the posting of her foot then the in it going to clubs wearing a bandage not wearing a bandage just like what is with all these games and it just doesn't make sense anyway it continues uh megan's people trying to frame me for shooting knowing i didn't do it i'm coming at the, my truest he also claims despite the controversy they saw reached number one on us apple music which was announced as a tweet on friday Halsey, who often supports victims of abuse on the platform quickly came to her defense again just quickly coming to the defense thing, man. It's going to bite everyone in the back sooner rather than later. Sooner rather than later, somebody that everyone loves is going to get involved in a very questionable um, allegation, right? One that's really going to touch people. Remember when Leonard Dunham came out and defended her writer colleague who was accused of sexual assault and then she came out really hard against a woman and then it got you know proven the fact that she was actually telling the truth and she made it made Len Dunn look stupid the same thing is going to happen to these people who are like believable women one day something really dark is going to happen and it's not going to be true and everyone's going to be looking really really dumb anyway she says here she holds you tweeted a thing she says i'm sorry but i really can't believe whoever is listening to this and letting this man speak on or profit from his violence towards somebody who we know and love now again if the case, if it's true, and again, this is the thing with cancel culture. I kind of agree with cancel culture, right? In some way, shape or form. If you're not able to um, seek justice, right? Through the court system and your only way is to publicly um, cancel somebody, right? To kind of tarnish their name, to run hashtags every day, to leave derogatory comments on their Instagram posts, run a free, do what you want. But if the, if the market decides that they want to buy their tickets, enjoy their music, you can't then go out your way to stop those people attending those shows calling in bomb threats and all that sort of stuff that's our line but if you're more if you want to publicly dismerge their name and go out there and pick it outside their shows have banners up there um if you've got your own platform and you don't want to cover them cool do your thing but wait until we go to the go to the court of law and it's decided whether or not what happens or inspired then you can make your decision but to stand there and all mike and say that he can't make music he can't have a career he can't support his family based off allegations is nuts absolutely nuts especially when you think of how um how um how up in the air the whole thing was right they were all drunk they were all probably high they were all living life and a really unfortunate incident happened to believe anyone's account of the story is insane no matter how traumatic it is right we need to have time for people to assess the information from a neutral point of view and come to sort of some sort of decision like I, I don't know would you ever take somebody's i don't know it's hard, like can you remember everything that happened when you have a really big night out with your friends and you get a bit hammered it's hard to cut to find any kind of way to piece together what the night's actions were now I get it, if it's a traumatic event you could probably it comes to the front of your mind but let's just take a bit of a breath here 
So again, I don't mean she's coming from. She said Megan's yet to respond to Lane's album. She said, "Yes, sorry, Lane shot me. You shot me. You got your publicist and people to go on your blogs lying, which is definitely not true. She, if any, if anyone's doing um, PR work behind the scenes, it's definitely her. Um, stop lying. Why we lie? I don't understand. And again, I understand why you lie. I understand why people lie in general, right? You have to protect your interest. Um, you don't want to be put in a position where you're having to tell the truth. That sometimes lying is easier than telling the truth. I get it. I understand it, especially in Hollywood. It makes complete sense. You're in the record industry. You've got, you know, you're suddenly this because you know controversial i would say i don't really think her music matches up to her notoriety in that respect when it comes to her megan the stallion and you're very aware that you know your career could be gone in an instant a new girl comes along you know mulatto's doing pretty well um sweetie's um having a, a bit of a moment it's not you know people think people in music have very short memory so you need to do everything that you can to maintain your position right to build upon what you have and you don't want it to be taken away from you because you know how hard you work for it so i understand why people lie but I'm also understanding that, you know, I'll let the court case play out as it may be. And then if the decision is made in the courts that you can agree with and people can move on and whatever they can do, fair play. Because what happens again, this is the other issue. Same thing happened with Chris Brown and Rihanna. Rihanna got over the Chris Brown thing quicker than the fans did, right? She even said recently in another interview that they still are quite good friends to this day. What happens if Megan Thee Stallion forgives Tori for whatever allegedly did or did not happen and they move on and decide to be a couple or decide to be friends again? How how do you move on there? Can he still not be covered? Is he still not allowed? Do you have to wait until Megan gives you permission before you listen to his music again? It's just all so stupid, all so silly. And again, an unfortunate state of affairs for everybody involved. But again, um, I really enjoyed the album. I thought it was easily one of his best works. Um, it kind of plays really well from front to back. Musically, it definitely shows off his range. That's probably something that we've all kind of been wanting from a Toy Lanes album. I think this definitely delivers on that fact. Again, no surprise that his back is against the wall and suddenly he pulls out this album from his ass, right? Really, really, really impressive. Songwriting, melodies, different styles. Again, just showcases just how much of a talent he is. And again, if this goes to prove that he then is guilty of what he's done, fair enough, we'll revisit and make another decision on the case. But as it stands, with just allegations out there and no real evidence to prove that that he did or didn't do it i'm going to join the music for what it is and keep it moving and to the fans that are going out there out of their way to ride for one person or the other like just let the dust settle it's no one's business we don't know what happened four people in a car they know exactly what the truth is the police will get down to the bottom of it you're hoping in some way shape, especially when it involves celebrities in la they always sort of they always for the most part figure it out when it's people when it's when, when they that's, that's, that's the thing too when it involves pedestrians or ever you know civilians sorry that's when it becomes an issue right but when it involves celebrities they, they always get down to the bottom of it right you can you can bet your bottom dollar if nipsey hustle wasn't a hip-hop star they probably wouldn't have ever found out whoever killed him right but the fact that he was beloved in his industry so beloved in his community beloved in the industry and just generally a really cool dude in the scene people went out of their way to really try and find out and get to the bottom of this especially because they you know i'm sure the police were very aware of the negative reaction that would have come from if they didn't find the killer you know a, a pending gang war i think people did die off the back of that of, of him unfortunately passing as well so you you're of the feeling that it's when it involves two high profile people in LA, they're definitely going to get down to the bottom of it. And we'll finally find out what exactly happened on that night. But as, as what we have at the moment, Daystar is available streaming down all platforms, I guess. And again, one of my better albums I've listened to in the scene uh, for a while, especially off of um, Tory Lane. So definitely go and check that out. But again, let me know your thoughts on it. What do you think? Do you think Megan is having now listened to the album? Whose side of the story do you believe? Um, let me know in it. And again, um, do you think Kylie looks like a baby in a manger? I don't know, but hey, let me know down below your thoughts and opinions on 